What's up guys, my name is Mike Tavadi and today we're going to talk about some mortgages. The first thing we ever do when discussing pre-approval is first talk about your comfort level with buying the new home. And the comfort level can be defined with two feature parts. And those feature parts are what can you spend on a monthly payment basis and what can you spend out of pocket to acquire the home. The sum of these two costs will tell you exactly what your comfort level is and the exact sales price range you should be looking in. It's super important that when you're looking for homes and you're getting to make an ready to make an offer, you should always ask for specific numbers to your property prior to making an offer. Now, we get questions all the time and people want to know how do they know if they're going to be pre-approved or not. The first thing that we always look at when pre-approving you is your credit score. And mortgage companies will always use the middle score taken from Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion to determine what your qualifying credit score is. If your credit score meets the minimum requirements, it then determines what the best loan program is and the best terms are specific to your loan application. The second aspect of loan approval is your debt to income ratio. And this is where we determine if you make enough money to afford the mortgage you are looking to be applied for. How we do this is we take all of your debts off your credit report, divide it by your gross monthly income, not the net monthly income, and we get a ratio. Typically, we like that ratio to be between 35 and 45%, but we can go a little bit higher based on other compensating factors. And finally, the last portion of the pre-approval comes down to, do you have enough money to purchase the house? This is called your cash for closing. And on a primary and second home, it is allowable to receive gifts from family members to purchase the home. Now we're going to talk about some of the different loan programs available, as well as their lowest down payments. The most popular loan program is the conventional loan. And this requires a 3% down payment and does require private mortgage insurance when putting less than 20% down. Another very popular loan program is the FHA loan, which is essentially a government loan where you're required to put 3.5% down. For the higher sales prices and the higher loan amounts, that's called the jumbo loan. The loan amount and really your down payment does depend on how high you would like to go in that sales price range and your minimum down payments do vary from 5 to 15% down. You would need some specific consultation if you wanted any more details regarding the jumbo loan. Some specialty type loans are the doctor and professional loans which are designated for certain professions where we could put as little as 0% down with no mortgage insurance as well as the VA loans, which is the greatest gift to our country's veterans, which again allows 0% down and requires zero mortgage insurance. Now, people ask all the time, what really is mortgage insurance? Well, the definition of mortgage insurance is it's an additional cost paid for by the borrower or the homeowner when the down payment you're making on your new home is less than 20%. There are also a few different types of mortgage insurance. The most popular is your standard monthly mortgage insurance, which is an additional cost added to the overall mortgage payment. So your mortgage payment typically consists of principal and interest, which is the repayment of the loan, taxes specific to the property, homeowner's insurance specific to the property, and if less than 20% down, you will pay mortgage insurance as well. Standard monthly mortgage insurance, adds it to the monthly payment. Another type of mortgage insurance is where instead of paying it on a monthly payment basis, it is removed from the monthly payment and you agree to take a higher interest rate. Typically, this lowers the overall mortgage payment, but you will pay a higher amount of a loan repayment over the long-term life of the loan. The third type of mortgage insurance 
is your upfront mortgage insurance. Whereas instead of paying it as part of a monthly payment, you agree to pay a one-time lump sum cost and take care of all of your mortgage insurance in one shot. The fourth option is to take that upfront mortgage insurance and add it to the loan amount. So you're financing your loan amount and your mortgage insurance. Typically this get, leads to a slightly higher loan amount, but lower cost for closing and lower monthly payments. Another very popular question we always get is how do I know if I am going to be approved and is my credit too low? There's only one way to find out and that is talking with a true mortgage professional who will be able to tell you exactly what you need to do to improve your credit. If you do run into credit issues, we have plenty of professionals that we can send over in the credit repair industry who will discuss your credit with you and create a plan to get those scores up. It's also important that you stay in touch with your real estate and mortgage professionals to stay on track to make sure that when your credit is finally improved, we can get you back out there and looking at houses. What's my interest rate? A question we get all the time. Well, to be very truthful, it's a very hard question to answer because there are so many factors that determine what goes into the interest rate of a mortgage loan. To list some off, your credit score, which is the most important factor, the loan to value ratio, which determines how much you're putting down, the home occupancy, whether you're gonna be living there or renting the property out, and the size of the loan amount all factor into what your interest rate is. A couple others is property type, whether it's a single family home, multi-unit, or a condo. The loan program, based on the loan options we just discussed. The loan purpose, whether again, you're gonna be living there or renting out the property. And the state and location of where the home you're purchasing is. A lot of people always like to help out with their pre-approval process and they should know what their monthly income is for qualifying purposes. The easiest to calculate is your base salary income, where we essentially take your year salary, gross of course, and divide it by 12 months. In addition to that, we could also pair base salary with bonus and commission income. To use this type of income, there's a two-year history required and we'll take a 24-month average of that income. Getting slightly more complicated is hourly wage earners. Typically, there's a two-year history required of this type of income, but we can use the required hours of an employment contract to use as a minimum if there's not a two-year history provided. And the most complicated style of income to calculate is your self-employment. Without a doubt, there will be a two-year history of self-employed tax returns required by the mortgage industry to get approved for a loan. Now, what is an acceptable means of our down payment? Well, the easiest one to factor in is, of course, all the money that you have available in your checking, savings, and investment accounts. In addition to those accounts, we could also use funds from your retirement account. To discuss the details of how much money you can use of your retirement account, you'd be best off reaching out to the banking institution that holds those funds. Another very popular option is to have homeowners borrow funds from family members. Basically, these funds are provided from a family member so that you can get into the home. If you cost of a home is ever too expensive, we could also look at a seller assist, which can help decrease your cash for closing and lower the source of your down payment. A seller assist is where we ask for the seller to pay for a lower portion of our closing costs in exchange for a lower net sales price. To wrap it up, we're going to, want to talk about some more details of the three most popular loans available. The first loan is the conventional mortgage. As we discussed earlier, this loan program has a minimum down payment of 3% and will have mortgage insurance if you're putting less than 20% down. The max seller assist when putting less than 10% down is 3% of the sales price, which is a significant number. And if you're putting 10% down or more, that max seller assist 
can increase up to 6% of the sales price, but can never exceed the amount of the closing costs. Conventional mortgages are much more obtainable on condos. And nine times out of the 10, if you're going to purchase a condo, you will be using the conventional mortgage program. Also with the conventional loan, there's an incentive to put more down as your mortgage insurance gets cheaper with every 5% increment closer to 20%. What this essentially means is that your mortgage insurance at 15% down is cheaper than it is at 10% down, and it's cheaper at 10% down than it is at 5% down. One of the best parts about the conventional mortgage is that when your home equity level hits 22%, the PMI is automatically terminated from the monthly payment. Another very popular type is the FHA mortgage. The FHA mortgage is the government loan and is more designated to folks with less income and less cash needed for closing. The FHA loan is also more lenient with past credit problems, less stable employment history, and will not factor in your FICO score when determining what your interest rate or mortgage insurance rate is. You could have higher debt to income ratios. The max seller sits at 6%, and again, not to exceed closing costs, but your mortgage insurance is there for the life of the loan. The credit score, as I just mentioned, is not impacted by the rate or the MI. So depending on what your credit score is, the FHA or the conventional loan may be the better loan from you. There's only one way to find out, and that's to give us a call. A more select but a great, great loan program is the VA loan. The VA loans is a loan guaranteed by the Veterans Association that basically gives veterans the ability to buy a house with 0% down and no mortgage insurance. It also has very low interest rates, but we must be sure that the veteran is able to obtain their certificate of eligibility and is eligible for the financing. All veterans will know exactly what this is, and we're always here to help you secure this amazing type of financing. We're gonna end it up with some frequently asked questions. Yes, you can pay down some of your current debt to qualify for a home mortgage. So if you don't think that you qualify for a loan as is, you can still get pre-approved and we can tell you exactly what debts need to be paid down to get approved for the mortgage. We will also pay off those debts as part of the mortgage process and we'll assist you with this process as well. Yes, gift funds from a family member can make up 100% of the cash for closing. No, locking in your interest rate does not force you to buy the home. If something were to ever happen with your contract, do not feel obligated to proceed forward with the sale and the purchase just because you have locked in an interest rate. There are no wrong answers in this process. We are here to manage every single unique individual situation. Everyone's mortgage application is different and everyone's mortgage process has a different path. The most important part is yes, the mortgage pre-approval process is free and easy. All it is, it's a simple phone call and we're here to help. If you ever needed to contact us, you can contact Steve at his office and cell number there and me at my cell and email there. We're always here to help. We wanna get you in those houses and we're always on your side. Thanks, have a great day.